I would now like to introduce Lauren, our speaker for today, our main speaker for today, to tell us about love, what love really is and how to truly embrace it and how to pass it on to each and everyone on this planet Earth because, you know, everyone needs love and needs to love. Okay, Lauren. Thank you, Renee. Good morning, my Temple family. And a very special welcome to our guests from Colorado. It's lovely to have you. I would also like to extend my words of welcome to those who are listening on the World Wide Web. It is with great gratitude and humility I give this talk to such a fabulous congregation. The theme for today's service is love. On this Youth Sunday, I have the pleasure of sharing the podium with three young adults. They are, they are our own Aifashani and Shevani, and one of our special guests from Colorado, Addison, will also share on the podium. I'm going to ask them just to come up one after the other, um, and I'll kick it off with Aifashani. Aifa, could you please come to the podium? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Aifa Shani, which means love. My, my talk this morning is on love. While preparing this talk, I decided to find the meaning of the word love. Out of the many definitions, I found the one that made the most sense to me says, Quote, love is a strong feeling of affection for a person or thing, unquote. This is as per the definition of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Love is powerful and important in our everyday lives. We show, show love with every smile, hug, and laugh we share with each other. As stated in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, though I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Although I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. This Bible verse tells us that love indeed is powerful. So powerful, love can change one's life. So powerful, it can stop a war, and so powerful, it can bring two countries together. That is the power of love. There are different types of love which shows its true meaning. Some are brotherly and sisterly love, love between parent and child, love towards neighbors, and most importantly, the love of God. These types of love, out of the many types of love, are the ones I'll be looking at this Youth Sunday. First, brotherly and sisterly love. This love is a common type of love shared between siblings, even if they have quarrels. Those of whom in the congregation, including myself, who have or had siblings will know what I'm speaking of. <laughs> With older or younger siblings who might or used to drive us over the edge, you will still love his or her company. No matter how much you can't stand them and how much I can't stand you and go away is your hollow, you will always love your sibling. This love is boundless. Love between parent and child. This love is a type of love that causes you to trust your mother and father. This love is a love that causes our parents to worry about our well-being every five minutes or more. <laughs> this love is unconditional. Love towards neighbors. As the Lord said, quote, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Unquote. Loving your neighbor covers both loving your friend and foe. This love is a love you show by helping or forgiving. For example, 
Your classmate offended you, and instead of apologizing, him or her pushes you on the ground and walks off. The next day, when the person needs help, instead of returning the person's bad deed, you forgive them and help them. As the saying goes, a soft answer turneth away wrath. This love is forgiving. Last and most importantly, the love of God. The love of God is the most important of all kinds of love. This love is the original, the source of all love. God's love flows through us and from us. This love is always abundant, always boundless, and always unconditional. Love can always be shared and is always obtainable. Love is always powerful and positive no matter the circumstances. Love is God. Love is always in our hearts. And because of this, make a promise that you will always share and spread the love of God. So please repeat after me. I will spread God's love every which way I turn. I will spread God's love every which way I turn. This morning, I leave you with the boundless love of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you all know, most of you all know, my name is Chevrolet Johnson, right? <laughs> the focus of my talk this morning is about the story of two very famous tennis players, Serena and Venus Williams. Both ladies are products of what we in Jamaica call the inner city. I prefer to say that they had humble beginnings. As As children, the, the two stars fell in love with the game of tennis. And with the support of their parents, their own determination and hard work, their love brought them to the top of their game. Love allowed the Williams sisters to alternate the top two spot positions in the game, despite the many hardships they encountered along the way. Both have battled serious ailments and come back through diligence and dedication. The story goes, and it is true, that when Venus was number one, her dad told the world that her younger sister was even better. Of course, many doubted him, but the Williamses, Williams family knew that he spoke truth because they knew their love for each other and for tennis. The first famous Wimbledon final contested between the sisters proved their father right. So my story ends with a little bit of advice. Find what you love and work at it with diligence and dedication. Then allow love to fulfill your dreams. Love works. Ask Venus and Serena Williams. Good morning. My name is Addison. I'm traveling with the Colorado group, but I came from Portland, Oregon. And um, what I think most people know about love is that which they have learned from experience. At least that's what they know best about it. Because we learn about the power of love from experiencing it firsthand or from seeing how it works for other people around us. So here I am to share with you my own experience with the power of love. I have this vivid memory of sitting with my mother one day in our living room and having a conversation. And I believe I remember it so vividly because she said something that has stuck with me throughout the years. Strangely, I have no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> but I positively remember that I said something along the lines of, well, nobody's perfect. And without missing a beat, because she never does, she came back with, I don't believe that. And I was astounded. Jaw dropped, confused, surprised, and astounded. And it wasn't until after a few minutes of me sitting there with my dumbfounded face that she decided to explain. And she said this, I just don't think the universe would waste its time creating some imperfect being, you know? 
I most certainly did not know. And that was the end of the conversation. But it's always stuck with me, this idea that we are all perfect beings. My subconscious always causing me to involuntarily hear my mother's voice stating her disbelief whenever I heard someone say, nobody is perfect. It is sensible, I suppose, that the universe would not waste its time with imperfect people and that all being products of this great universe, we would all then be perfect beings. But it wasn't until later that I figured that out. So it has now been something like six years since that conversation with my mother, and I think now I actually have something insightful to say about it. <laughs> and I think she's right. And man, do I hate it when she's right. But she's right, because it doesn't make sense that the perfect people walk into our lives at the perfect time if we are not the perfect people to receive them. And this phenomenon... And this phenomenon happens all the time. So what then if we are all perfect? And that right there is the question, isn't it? If we are all perfect, well, then what? Then we need to start treating ourselves as though we are perfect beings. But first we need to perceive and see ourselves as a perfect being. Because perfection is not always what we see in the mirror, is it? That, I believe, is because as humans we forget. We forget that we are perfect beings as we are. So how can we remind ourselves? My simplest answer is this, get a better mirror. <laughs> Your mirror doesn't just have to be a simple mirror. It can be very easily turned into a frame, a frame for a picture of your perfect self. Outline the edges of your mirror with anything that represents perfection to you. Pictures, poems, affirmations, anything. Put them all up there so that when you come up to look in this mirror, you see yourself surrounded by perfection and you can perceive yourself and know that you are a part of that perfect reflection. The perfection in you should be recognized and celebrated. Everything it is is what makes you, you. And what a beautiful being you are. Learn to love the beautiful being that you are. Thank you, guys. Um, I don't think you all need to hear from me anymore, right? <laughs> Let's give them one more round of applause. Really, that was good. Uh, I'll start with last week's Sunday was my week with the Sunday school kids. You know, they fascinate me. I mean, I find them brilliant, and I learn from them as much as, well, I hope they learn from me. But in the lesson, we learn that God is love. We are children of God. We have the characteristics of God. And because God is love, we are love. We shared acts of kindness that were done at school and home in the previous week. And then we stated acts of kindness which we would do in the week to come. Performing an act of kindness is performing an act of love. You don't have to do it, but it's done freely and sincerely with the expectation of nothing in return. When an act of kindness is performed, something has happened. A seed is planted, a seed of love. I believe it was Reverend Michael that was telling us about the bamboo tree in a few Sundays back. Um, I'm going off memory here. I believe he said that the bamboo tree took five years to break ground. And after it breaks ground, within five weeks, it grows in excess of 75 feet tall. The bamboo tree needs constant care during the five years of growth, even though there's nothing to be seen. It's just earth, but something is still happening beneath the earth. Um, are there any horticultural experts in the house? Courtney. <laughs> Courtney? Well, I need to check with Courtney. In my preparation for the topic, um, I discovered that if you want to be a successful gardener, um, you should plant pumpkins. All you need is a seed. It, re it requires very little care. And within a few weeks, you have a vine, and then the flowers follow after. Interacting with humans are similar. An act of kindness, a seed of love, 
will cultivate in a person that receives it. The result may not be visible right away, but a, transfor a transformation will happen. Sometimes we expect the pumpkin effect. Oh, that's not real, I made that up. <laughs> and, <laughs> an immediate response in the way that you expect someone to react. But in reality, this doesn't always happen. Um, I'll give an example. Like, you know, you're driving and you give somebody a blind and they don't, you know, toot or show anything. What happens? But Bex, right? For our visitors, that means we're upset. <laughs> right? But we're all children of God, made of the same substance, but we are individuals. I'm going to share a quote by Abraham Lincoln which reads, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. Yeah. Think about it for a moment. How does it resonate with you now? Right. We see people displaying bad attitudes, people who commit crimes, kids who are called problem children, kids who fight. We need to bear in mind that we do not know what people are going through or what they have been through. These conditions affect people's behavior. Some may be holding on by their last string and their outward behavior is what's keeping them sane. The actions we take could push them over the edge or oppositely bring them back to safe ground. Um, I came across this verse, Proverbs 15:4. It reads, the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but the perverse tongue crushes the spirit. My interpretation of that is, our words and our actions are powerful weapons and we need to be cautious and careful in how we use it. Or let me use the word responsible in how we use them. In most cases, react to people in the same way they act towards us. We need to see past this and plant a seed of encouragement, a seed of hope, a seed of love. Some people just need that one special person to make that change. Be that person. In my life, I've observed that most people want to do good. Some have poor methods, but the underlying intention is good. Let's not write people off. We should give them the benefit of the doubt. Human behavior is not perfect. We can allow people to have a moment of weakness. As humans, it is easy for us to disregard what we are not similar to, maybe in dress, talk, physical appearance, or the value system that people follow. We see this all over the world in the form of segregation um, and bullying in schools, that's, that's popular. War, wars are begun over this. We have all been guilty of this in some way at some point in our lives. How many people have we misjudged just by looking at the cover of their book, not even glancing on the first page. In new thought, this can be classified as race consciousness. When I started attending classes at the temple, um, quickly I got the thinking down, but as I pro progressed, I realized that my actions were not backing up my thinking. During the classes, learning about race consciousness more changed my perception of myself. I realized that it may not be other people that had a problem, it could be me. I was, I was looking at things wrong. Um, I'm gonna share an experience. I had a contractor, it was real, a real pain to work with. He delivered excellent work, however, but he was really challenging to work with. He always had an excuse. He was always miserable, he was unfriendly. He didn't take talking from anybody. He was, for the most part, missing in action whenever he really needed him. I dreaded having to use him to live on my projects, even though he was the best at what he did. I'd even stopped using him for a while, but, alas, the day came when I needed, him, I needed that job to be done perfectly. I needed his talent. Armed with my newfound knowledge, I took a different approach in dealing with him. I would typically call to schedule services with him, but instead I decided to meet face to face. I got to know him better. Can I tell you? Right now he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Right? Loyal to a fault. Really good guy. At that point in time, however, he was going through a lot with his family and he didn't even have somewhere to live stable. <clears throat> his full focus was not on work or anything else. He was thinking about his basic needs. 
just simple survival. He had serious stuff going on in his life. Putting myself in his shoes, I understood where he was coming from. I understood why his behavior was the way it was. And not everyone can balance everything on their plate. Most times, something has to give. I formed a new bond, and I gave him work wherever I could find it. My communication style with him changed, and the results from him changed. Eventually, his circumstances changed, and now he's a different person than he was a year ago. Remember the quote from Abraham Lincoln in the beginning? I don't like that man. <clears throat> I must get to know him better. After that story, what, what, what do we perceive now? This experience opened my eyes more to how blind we can be when we look on others. <clears throat> I have now stopped seeing people through eyes of judgment, but now eyes of love. We can help lift the fallen just by being someone who understands. We are a part of one universe, one love. We need to look out for our brothers and sisters. After all, we are all children of God. Surprisingly, watching a Kung Fu movie, I don't know how I picked this up in it, I picked up this quote I'll share. A place of worship is not for perfect people, but a hospital to help the hurting and lonely. Every person is on a journey. Where they are now is not the finished product. Don't be critical of people by where they are. Instead, look at the potential inside, the, the God substance, which is fertile soil. Unlike traditional gardening, the seeds that we plant take root immediately. The result may take time, but the root is there. The root is the important thing. Today, I want to think of our temple of light as a temple of love. And I want to give you all new professions. I want to call you all farmers. <laughs> farmers who sow seeds of love. Farmers, this week, Let's plant as many seeds of love, knowing that the fruits will bear and touch the entire world. It is time for the world to reinvent itself. Let's make it start with the seeds of love we plant today. Let the love grown from our center of spiritual living, our center of love, affect the world. Thank you.